Hi everyone, this tutorial is going to introduce you to facial animation in iClone and give you some tips on how you can create more detailed and realistic facial expressions quickly. Let's start off with our character here. If you have any character selected, you can just press the J hotkey to quickly zoom to the face like so. If you want to change any of your character's facial features first, you can do that in the head section. Since we're doing animation though, I'll move to the animation tab and make sure I'm in the facial animation section. There are a number of script templates you can apply in the content manager here. If you want, you can double click these or drag them onto your character to apply that emotion template to them. The first one you see is a little worried, while the second is more impatient. These can be useful for simple, continuous background character facial expressions. If you want to remove any of the animations you've applied to your character, simply right click on the character and then select Remove All Animation. Let's move on to getting our character to talk first though. The first and simplest option for character talking is text to speech, where you can simply type in any script you want. Once I've finished typing in my script, I can press preview to hear what it will sound like. It won't really help much in this case, but if I want to, I can raise the pitch of the voice to sound a bit less manly. Otherwise, you'll have to download separate software. This will be the result. Hi everyone, welcome to iClone 5. Definitely a little strange, so let's remove the animation once again and move on to a Crazy Talk CTS file. A CTS file will include emotion as well as head movement, as you can see when I import it. Come on, relax! I'll scrub back to the beginning of the timeline now and demonstrate how you can apply a different expression to your character's face from the Modify panel. Let's apply a sad expression to the character. First, I want to turn down the level of expressiveness to show the normal level. You can see when I play back that there's a different expression now. Come on, relax! If I increase the expressiveness level for the next playback, you can see my character seems a bit more cheerless. Come on, relax! Next, I'm going to apply a wave file to the character. You can either record your own live or use a pre-recorded one like I'm doing here. If you knew that visiting your grandparents could change the world, would you do it? Of course you would. You'd have to be a douche nozzle not to. What I'm going to do now is open up the timeline, select my character, and reveal the facial tracks. I'll find my character track, open up the face track, and then expand the Visemi track. Notice that there is a wavelength shown here, as well as some indicators for various mouth movements. I can zoom out a bit on the timeline to see the entire clip. Notice that mouth movements will coincide with the mouth movement indicators on the lips track. The lip syncing is fairly good, however, if we want, we can make further adjustments, which I'll do later. So let's add some emotion to this clip. The easiest way to do this is with the facial puppet panel. I can open that up from the bottom of the Modify panel here. If I want to preview the facial puppet profiles, I can simply press the space key and move my mouse around to simulate facial expression and head movement. In the facial puppet panel, there are many different templates for different iClone characters. Some are more suited for cartoon characters, as their facial movements are more exaggerated. Others are more natural, such as Gwyn and Chuck's profiles. Using the Jimmy Toon profile on Gwyn here, for example, might come up with a bit of a strange result. You can experiment with each one to find the exact look that you want. If you use the QWERTY keys at the top of your keyboard, you can also toggle between different templates without needing to stop the preview or recording in between. This can be really useful for changing expressions mid-recording. There are a number of different templates you can use, however these ones are more suitable for natural movement and expression with G5 Quinn. Notice that each facial expression template has its own unique style and level of expression.
Okay, let's choose a smiley template here and record. After I press the record button, I need to press space to begin my recording. Then, as the recording progresses, I can move my mouse around to simulate natural facial expression and head movement. I'll play back one time so you can see the final result. If you knew that visiting your grandparents could change the world, would you do it? Of course you would. You'd have to be a douche nozzle not to. Now you can also isolate different sections of the face for separate animation. So what I'm going to do is deselect all of the facial sections here and only leave the eyes selected. When I preview now, you'll see that only the eyes will move along with the head. I can remove head rotation by toggling the option below, as well as head tilting. Finally, only my eyes will be moving in the end. This means I can record over top of the previous clip and adjust the eyes especially. I can also adjust the movement strength of individual facial parts, such as the eyes, by going into the properties panel. Here, I'm just entering in some higher values for eye movement. You'll notice some stronger eye movement now. What I'm going to do is record over the animation and adjust the eye movements to look more natural. If you knew that visiting your grandparents could change the world, would you do it? Of course you would. It might take a couple of tries, but remember, you can always press Ctrl Z to undo your last effort and try again. If you knew that visiting your grandparents could change the world, would you do it? Of course you would. You'd have to be a douche nozzle not to. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to make some smaller, more subtle expressions using the Facial Key Editor. I'll open that up from the Modify panel, and the first thing I want to do is copy the original key in the Facial Layer track, and then play ahead to the part of the animation I want to make a slight eyebrow raise. At that point where I want to begin my eyebrow raise, I'll paste the original keyframe, and then skip to the frame where I want my eyebrow to be at the height of its raise. Here I'll go to the muscle section of the key editor, and select the eyebrow which I want to raise. Then just click and drag upwards to bring it up. I can also select the other one and lower it for emphasis. It also might help a bit to raise the lower lids of the eyes as well, so I'll throw that in for good measure. You can see what it will look like as I scrub through the timeline here. What I need to do to bring the eyebrow back down is to select the original keyframe again, copy it, then paste it somewhere after the eyebrow raise. If I want the eyebrow raise to last for longer, I can copy that keyframe as well, then paste it further down where I want my eyebrow to begin its descent. Also, I can do some further detailed editing by using the detail panel. I can adjust the eyebrow raise even further by clicking on that particular indicator and dragging it in any direction. I'll scrub through here again, and now you can see the final result. Not bad, right? Just a subtle addition you can easily add in a minute or two. So now let's get around to correcting those lip movements near the end there. You can see from the wavelength and the lip syncing track that something is amiss. We're missing lip movements for the last two words, not, and to. Nozzle not to. If I go to where the mouth movement is missing and double click on the lip sync track, I'm presented with a list of phonemes. Here I probably want to use the O phoneme to simulate the word not. So I'll select that, but you'll see that her mouth is way too wide. I can tone down the expression level at the bottom to fix that. Now when I scrub through, you'll see she has mouth movement for not, 
but not for 2. So I'll go over to where the 2 begins and repeat the same procedure, this time choosing the U phoneme. Once I select that, if I want to alter it further, I can also do that through the facial key editor. Always remember to copy the last keyframe and paste it to where you want your next expression to begin and end. Once I've done that, I'll adjust the mouth here slightly to exaggerate the OO expression a little bit. You can see now that when I play back, the lip syncing at the end looks a lot better. I'll play back one more time through the whole thing. If you knew that visiting your grandparents could change the world, would you do it? Of course you would. You'd have to be a douche nozzle not to. Well, that's about it for facial animation. See you next time.